During this week's debates, there were few candidates who weren't on the stage. One of those contenders was the former Alaska Senator Mike Gravel. According to a tweet by his campaign, Gravel qualified to be on the stage, but the DNC kept him off. And now for a new tweet, Gravel will be suspending his campaign. But the Gravelanche isn't over quite yet. They're forming the Gravel Institute to help create strong activists. Senator Gravel joins me now via Skype to explain. Thank you so much for being here, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So, Senator, obviously you weren't on that debate stage, but what, what did you see last night? Who do you think won and who do you think lost? Who did the best in your estimation? I think in the second debate, there was Tulsi Gabbard who really, in my mind, stood out. And then in the first night, uh, certainly Bernie and uh, Warren gave a great account of themselves. And I don't think anybody touched them in that regard. So and those are my three favorites in any event. Uh, to be to uh, acquire the presidency, Bernie, Tulsi, and uh, Elizabeth. <clears throat> so, in terms of the progressives, that's obviously where you stand. How are you looking at how you're going to support Tulsi, Bernie, or Warren? Well, uh, um, first off, I've been uh, saying repeatedly that those are my choices, and that those are the most qualified to occupy the White House. And, and as you can see, Tulsi is rising in the polls. Bernie is still way up on top, and thank God. Uh, and he's doing an excellent job. So I could live with any one of those three, uh, both the president and vice president. Uh, and so now it's a question of their uh, campaigning uh, continuously. What will really winnow the, the group out will be, in, I believe it's in February, where you have uh, the caucuses uh, in Iowa, mm -hmm. uh, that, that will just decimate the, the members uh, who are running for president. And, and I would hope that the three people that I'm concerned about uh, make that cut. Senator, <laughs> you said you're, you you're going to be suspending the campaign and to focus on the Gravel Institute. However, you are not actually allowed up on the debate stage. I think uh, the teens who run your Twitter account uh, tweeted something derogatory at the DNC chairman. Do you, do you have a message for him if he's watching? Well, the, uh, my, my kids, the kids that are running the campaign for me, they met uh, Mr. Perez yesterday and he didn't have kind words for them and he didn't, they didn't have kind words for him. Well, there's no question that they, uh, that they conspired to make sure that I didn't get into the debates. I'm not terribly disturbed over that. <clears throat> we received a lot of attention because of the uniqueness of two teenagers uh, running a presidential campaign of the person who's the oldest person running for president in American history. Uh, the novelty of that brought a lot of attention, uh, which permitted us to expose our views on uh, fundamental change, particularly the view that I have that we need to create a legislature of the people and operate it so that people can make laws in every government jurisdiction of the United States. The, the representative government has a monopoly on lawmaking. And as a result of that, our society is controlled by the 1%. So we have a simple choice. We can either continue to be controlled by a small minority, or we can move to a majoritarian process of government which could include anybody and everybody. Mm -hmm. Senator, one of the things I find most fascinating about you is that you're a lot, lot like Bernie Sanders, one of these original progressive voices within the United States Senate. I, I am curious to see whether you think it is a mistake on Senator Sanders' part to brand himself a democratic socialist. Speaking purely electorally, <laughs> is Elizabeth Warren maybe doing a better job by, by branding her policy proposals as economic patriotism? What do you think? No, I think that the, uh, the branding of democratic socialism is excellent, and but it, but the problem is that Democrats aren't comparing it properly to Republican socialism. So democratic socialism are issues that affect and benefit the American people. Republican socialism benefit the one percent, uh, the military industrial complex or Wall Street. So that's the comparison that has to be made. Do you want democratic socialism? Now, keep in mind, socialism, all that means is uh, a device, government is a device for people to act collectively on subjects. That's all that is. To, to, to demonize uh, and disparage that word is ridiculous. But Trump has 
but said that <clears throat> we should con he should concentrate on tagging the Democrats as democratic socialists. I think they ought to own up to that. There's nothing wrong with that. But they ought to make the constant comparison to Republican socialism. And it is socialism because they're using the government to benefit their minority interests. That's socialism. So, what, so if you put before the American people, hey, do you want democratic socialism or do you want Republican socialism? I think overwhelmingly the people would choose democratic socialism. I see. Senator, last time I had you on the show, you had some choice words for Mayor Pete Buttigieg. You, you imply they basically had nothing uh, going for his candidacy other than uh, his homosexuality. Do you, how, how did you think of his, uh, what did you think of his campaign performance last night? Has he done better in your estimation since the last time we spoke? No, he's, he's just pretty uh, continued. Uh, one person said that, you know, God, he was great. He's really very bright. Well, there's no question he's bright, but the, but here, <clears throat> during the Kennedy administration, we had the best and the brightest, and they took us into Vietnam. So being bright is is not necessarily the final criteria for a president. It's it's called judgment. And so what <clears throat> what I see Mayor Pete doing is is setting himself up to be the puppet for the military industrial complex in Wall Street. And so he's he's got a broad base there. Uh, but I think that Bernie and uh, Elizabeth Warren uh, make, and Tulsi making the case that you can't accept money from from various uh, zillionaires and say that you're going to be independent. And so I don't think that uh, Buttigieg would be independent in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's not done a terrible, uh, unusual job as mayor. And so if that's the case, uh, campaigning because you're gay... Is, is fine. I've supported that from the get go before he was, while well, he was, well, he was still in the closet. But, but no, today, and, and so when a candidate makes his presentation on the debate and doesn't say anything other than he's going to bring people together, we're going to work together, well, that, that's all poppycock. What you want is specific reasons why you should vote for him. And so I characterize him as a bit of an empty shirt. Mm -hmm. What did you think of the former vice president's performance last night? Well, he got hammered on all sides, and uh, and but but Joe Joe's an experienced politician. He can take the lumps. The, the The key thing is that his record is constantly being exposed, and that record is not a good record. Joe personally is a nice guy, but as far as a on issues, he's a Neanderthal, and he wants to take the party back to what he calls the center. Well, there's, there is no center. The Democratic Party got pulled over to the right, uh, beginning with Clinton's uh, and, and to the present. And so when a person says I'm a center, what he's saying that that person is on a right. I think what we need to do is pull the Democratic Party back over to the center so that you have a center and where you have a progressive element of the party in a reasonable position. One thing I'm curious, uh, sir, because you have been on this on these issues so long for so long, is it possible for Senator Bi for former Vice President Biden to to actually reflect on his past record and change his mind? Was that would that be something that you could take sincerely, or is it just his past record and judgment that you view as out of bounds? No. First off, there's nothing wrong with uh, flipping or changing your mind as you acquire more knowledge, mm -hmm. but you got to keep in mind. Some of the infractions that Joe's been charged with, uh, he was chairman of a of a major committee, uh, like when he had the hearings on uh, where uh, he savaged uh, and did not bring forth the two corroborating witnesses for Anita Hill. No, that, that that's that's that shows bad judgment. And so when you're when you have bad judgment and you're in your forties uh, and you're chairman of a major congressional committee. And that's not all that excusable. And, and of course, he hasn't apologized for that. Now, his, his work with respect to the credit cards, uh, where he was able to uh, change the bankruptcy law favoring credit card companies and banks, and, of course, doing damage to the average working person. So he, he characterizes himself as a, a supporter of the working man. Well, his legislative career does not indicate that. Not at all. In fact, just the opposite. <clears throat> Senator, 
as the oldest person to ever run for president, do you think that age is a legitimate issue to ask about Bernie Sanders and about Joe Biden? No, not really, because if you look at them, they look healthy as all get out. And uh, I'm 89, so uh, and and obviously I'm the, I'm on the right side of the grass. But uh, <laughs> but as far as uh, as both Joe and uh, Bernie, I think that they're they're fine. Here, Tulsi's 38 years old, and she's fine. Uh, and so, no, I would. Here, it's it's a question of health. Mm -hmm. If if you're healthy. Uh, hell, you can go, you can go to a hundred and and make reasonable judgments. Well, uh, so I would not disqualify them in a heartbeat. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Senator. Uh, we're very sad we never got to see you on the debate stage, but we're going to have you back so you can continue to uh, to give us your thoughts on the race. Thank you very much. You're very thank kind. you very much, sir. We'll have more rising for you after this.